All right, uh, what I eat in a low carb day. This is probably the only ever thing I'm gonna do where I talk about, oh, what I eat in a day, blah, blah, blah. Because what I eat for my body, my system, my goals is gonna be very different than other people. Case in point, um, I'm a very large human. I'm 6'2". Huge. <laughs> you can't tell because I'm on a screen. But what I eat and what I do for my health is not typically what I recommend for other people, unless you're also 6'2", <laughs> right? So we get led astray oftentimes by what people say, oh, this is what I eat in a day, blah, blah, blah. So I make bio-individual recommendations based on you, your health history, hormone levels, all this stuff. So, you know, this is one of the things to kind of keep in mind. Take this with a grain of salt when I talk about what I eat in a day. Remember, this is for me, but this is a great example overall of when you're looking at overall health things for you. Um, and just to kind of keep perspective around this. Keep perspective around this. Yes. So um, I'm Dr. Beth Westy, women's health and hormone expert, author of the books, The Female Fat Solution, The Female Menopause Solution. These are on Amazon. Great resources on how to eat for your hormones and your cycle. Um, and I love talking about that stuff. But oftentimes when we talk about different nutrition tactics, this is a nutrition tactic that you can use to help boost your metabolism. I do make this recommendation for people who um, have some type of insulin resistance, blood sugar issues um, connected to your metabolism, hormone issues, things like that. And that can be impacted by your cortisol levels, by your other hormone imbalances in your system. And if you're like, how do I know if I have hormone imbalances? Dutch test. Uh, Dutch test is a hormone test that shows us what your system's doing and test your cortisol, test your adrenals, test your estrogen and progesterone and testosterone. All It's so comprehensive and it's amazing. So this is how I can see if, you know what, your system probably has some issues with processing it and would carb cycling be helpful for you? Sure, yes, right? So this is something I teach women how to do and I take you through. So in the comments, there is a link for you to look at getting your own Dutch test and looking at what your levels would be. Super easy to take. They send the test right to your home. You take the test, send it into the lab, to the lab, not to me. <laughs> lab processes it and then we go over your results. So other thing that I wanna talk about with low carb day, just a low carb day, I don't recommend eating low carb all the time for most people, especially for female people because it is really hard on your endocrine system if you are not getting enough carbohydrate. It is really hard on your endocrine system if you have a lot of stress, adrenal fatigue, all of those things, and you are eating low carb all the time. It is not healthy. If you are an athlete, if you push your body on a you know weekly basis, training for things, you are gonna need carbohydrate. These are really, this is a really important nutrient group to include all the time, right? And again, you notice I'm not saying no carb, mm -mm, just a low carb day, used in conjunction with carb cycling. And carb cycling is something that I do recommend for females, but again, you have to be ready for it. You have to have enough nutrient base in your system. And there are a lot of people who try stuff like this or try fasting and oh, I wanna you know, lose weight or my metabolism's not working. If you're trying some of these tactics and it's not working, not giving you that weight loss result, that means that there's something else going on that you need to address before your metabolism will restart. If you have adrenal fatigue, I don't care how many times you carb cycle. I don't care how many times you intermittent fast. Your body is not going to increase in metabolism unless you get out of adrenal fatigue. It's just it's like a priority for your body, right? Priority for your body. So keeping that in mind, <laughs> When we talk about this stuff, I always want to preface that ahead of time, like, okay, yep, this is, this, I will talk about this and go through this, but this is not something for everybody, or you have to do some groundwork first to get to that point, right? Or like, everybody thinks that they're at the starting line. I'm going to do carb cycling, I'm going to do fasting, and I'm going to make this progress because I'm at the starting line. You're not at the starting line. You are in the parking lot, standing in a three-foot hole that you have to work yourself out of and then get to the starting line before these things will work. It's not that these things don't work, it's just that they don't work for you. We need to address something with your system, which is again, why we do the Dutch testing. That's a great place to start. So let me know if you guys have questions on that, um, but I wanted to talk about what to eat in a low carb day here and really address this specifically. So one thing that you need to make sure of 
when you're doing anything that you're restricting a nutrient, again, just for one day, not all the time, not keto, that is not healthy for most people, especially when you're looking at hormones. Um, and if anybody wants to send me any research, and this research article shows blah, 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 I want you to look at who they did the studies on. And if it was on a male, don't send it to me because I've already seen it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just saying, people like to start fights. And they're like, well, this study says blah, blah, blah. I'll be like, yeah, they're doing that study on a male body. So it doesn't apply for a female body because no. Okay. So low carb day, right? I've also done podcasts on my, like on things on keto. So which my podcast is called the female health solution. So you can look there for podcasts um, on that. And okay. Anyway, so low carb day, things that I do eat. You first, you need to make sure you're getting enough protein and fats. So I'm not going to do a percentage or anything like that, but just to make sure you're getting enough protein. It can depend on how much, but I'll give you an example for me because this is titled what I eat. So I myself, again, I am 6'2". I am very large. I have a high activity level. Um, I have other, you know, uh, you know, just when I say activity level, I've got three kids. I you know, we have two dogs. I work a lot. So I need a certain amount of energy from the food I eat. So I'm going to get, you know, 180 ish grams of protein per day. Now I need to make sure I'm getting that on the day. So if you're not used to getting a higher number of protein like this for somebody else, maybe your number is 140, maybe your number is 120, whatever it is for you, right? This is something that I help make recommendations based on each person of what you have going on. But this is for me, right? This might not be for you, but this is for me. So I need to make sure I'm getting that, right? I need to make sure I'm getting, let's just say 70 grams of fat per day. That's also a good place to start, getting enough healthy fats in. Women oftentimes do not get enough healthy fat. We were restricting on healthy fats and things like that because we are terrified of eating too much fat. So there's that. And then for carb, I'm just going to put here 60 grams for this one day. Now on other days, if I'm doing a carb cycle, and I have other videos on carb cycling, um, my YouTube channel is Dr. Beth Westy, so you can subscribe to that um, and check out some of the videos I've done on how to do carb cycling there. But like there might be days where I'm doing 200 grams, right? Yes, absolutely, right? That's a whole, That looks very different than this. That looks very different than this, but to do low carb for like 60 grams, again, if you're counting macros, things like that, sometimes it's like, oh my gosh, how do I, how do I get this in? Well, most of it is protein. So I need to make sure I'm planning out my protein sources. I need to make sure I'm planning out my fats. So I literally, I brought props, you guys. I brought props for this. Let me get my props. So, oh my gosh, I'm throwing my props. Okay. So this is just, this is a chicken breast. That's, I meal prep sometimes, but I make chicken. And then the next day I have like, this is leftover from last night to eat the next day, right? <clears throat> so this is just a chicken breast. This is a very large chicken breast. Like it's almost as big as my hand. So this is gonna be like 40 grams of protein at least right here. Awesome. That makes it way easier. Doing shakes, protein shakes, protein bars, things like that. Um, I love protein bars that um, have a lot of protein in them. You're looking for at least 20 grams of protein. Rar bars are my favorite. If you're like, what is that? Put a comment down below, um, we'll message you, or I'll put a post in there about what my favorite um, protein bars are, because they're amazing. But that's how I get to that number per day. For healthy fats, and then I also combine these other things, like I use hemp seeds a lot. Hemp seeds, there is 10 grams of protein per three tablespoons. This is a great thing to add to salads, add to smoothie bowls, add to whatever to help boost your protein. Brazil nuts, you know, using nuts and seeds, these are, there's not that much protein here, but this is a great way to get your healthy fats. And other nutrients in here, um, like selenium, uh, nutrients that are really important for hormones as well. Um, there's 20 grams of fat for nine whole nuts. Now, I usually eat these uh, at about three at a time with like a date or something, which does have carb in it, but on a low carb day, I won't be eating the date with it. I just eat the Brazil nuts. Lots of healthy fats here though. Um, and then I'm making sure I'm getting lots of, oh, I also brought a jar of peanut butter. Another great thing to add. And I will have peanut butter on 
a rice cake. Now rice cakes here, they all have 16 grams of carb per one cake. So I would have one of these with some peanut butter on it and some hemp seed, great. That's a great snack to add in as I'm having like lunch would be like chicken breast and snap peas or something or snow peas. You know, this is like, there's not that much carb here, right? But I would get the carb then for a snack with the rice cake, peanut butter and hemp seed. Yes. Um, cucumber, this is a funny shaped English cucumber <laughs> that I literally got from my fridge. This is real. I'm going to make this for lunch tomorrow. Low, there's no carb in this, but you need your veggies and green stuff here too. And adding in, um, you know, you can use hummus with this. You can use um, Greek yogurt, something like that as well, just to get more nutrients in all of that. And then other snack I have for carbs, even an apple, um, an apple and strawberries. Eating, not the whole thing of strawberries, right? Like eating maybe six of these big strawberries that I got. Um, I think I got these at Costco. Yeah. And that's going to be a serving of carb for a low carb day, eating an apple with peanut butter, serving of carb for a low carb day. So this helps really balance things out. And that would be the amount of carb for day. It would be the strawberries, the apple, and the rice cake would be about it. Um, I could have a rice cake or two because that's about 60 grams of carb. But I'm going to get enough healthy fats in and really overload with protein. Eggs, chicken, protein shakes, protein bars, and supplementing that way. And the specific protein bars I use are also lower in carb. So I can have them on a lower carb day. So... That's my example of what I eat on a low-carb day. The biggest thing I'm uh, counting, though, is protein. If you're not getting enough protein, doing what you want carb cycling to do for a low-carb day isn't going to do it. It's not going to happen. And you're going to be frustrated because you're going to have a hard time getting through the day, and you're not going to get the right result. So this is why I walk you through this. This is why when we work together, I guide you through this process. One, to make sure your body's ready for it. And two, that you're doing it in a way that makes sense and you feel the right result happen in your system. So let me know if you guys have any other questions like that uh, on this. Again, um, you know, leave a comment here below. I do check the comments. So I want to make sure if there's anything that you need cleared up that we talk about that. Um, and other things that I wanted to mention here that I have for you as well are my tinctures. If you're like, oh my gosh, I think I might have hormone you know, imbalances. I have my tinctures uh, for estrogen and progesterone. Um, these things are amazing for helping you balance your hormones overall. Taking days 1 through 14 and days 15 through 28 of your cycle to help regulate your hormones. And if you are having issues with uh, adrenal fatigue, things like that, I have my adrenal balance one that helps. Again, these are, I, I formulated these. I made these. I formulated these to help your system function better for the female body overall. So that's what I got for you guys today. Please let me know if you have any other questions or need anything else. Otherwise, I will see you later.